Following three successful seasons as offensive coordinator at Nebraska, we had come to a crossroads. Return for a new extension at Nebraska or chase our dream as a college football head coach. And after numerous interviews and much deliberation, we decided to take the next step for our career as head coach for the Oregon State Beavers. Signing a healthy five-year contract, Nebraska would hire Keith Heckendorf as their new OC from Arkansas State as we closed that chapter of our career. Our Beavers had a good senior class heading out and with two transfers coming in, and the number 73 recruiting class led by four-star halfback Chris Thomas, we had a long road to climb to bring Oregon State back to glory. Our arch rivals Oregon came into the season ranked as the number one team, and we were projected to finish dead last this year in the Pac-12. And our first game as head coach would come none other against our former squad at Nebraska on the road. Picking up midway through the first, third and 15, and a huge sack as Harburg would go down and three nothing lead for Nebraska as we pick up and the defense doing a great job in our first ever game as head coach here at Oregon State. And we would finally be able to get the offense going midway through the second quarter on the triple option. Goldbrunson takes it from five yards out and gives Oregon State the seven three lead. But Nebraska had an answer right back off the read option. Here comes Hardberg as he would take it on a third and two to the house. A huge rushing touchdown gives Nebraska the lead as it's now a 13-7 game. Hardberg stopped on a third and two. Now with a big play, picking back up fourth quarter. Nebraska would make it a multi-possession game. Hardberg's second rushing touchdown, 21-7. But here's the answer from our Beavers. Smith with a great first down play. Another one. Here is Mason with the spin move, almost able to squeak into the end zone, but set up a play later here on second and goal. Collins, one yard out, gives us a touchdown, makes it a 21-14 game. Bowman on a second and 12, showing you what he's able to do. And on this play, it would have been a third down, but a face mask would falter. And now Nebraska would take the win 28-14. Second game on the docket as we come in 0-1 against Arkansas. But Mason with a 31-yard reception would set up on this second down play. The corner out to Beeson, 7-0, Zariah Beeson. Third and four, the defense showing you a stop as Goss stops short, fourth down and one. That would lead the very next possession as Bolden would take it as he breaks the tackle into the end zone, 33 yards out, 14-0 Beavers. Second quarter, third and 16, and Gulberson over the top on the streak. He hits Bolden, make it a three possession lead. Third and five, Arkansas trying to get something going here, but the defense able to jar that ball loose. The defense just standing up strong here in this first showing. As you can see here, third and eight drop pass. Just time and time again, the Oregon State defense was our strength throughout the early season. Goldbertson right here, second and six over the middle, hits Newell to make it a first and goal. But unfortunately, fourth and goal, the defense for Arkansas stands up and stands us down. A zero yard rush, turnover on downs. But no matter, as we come to the end of the third quarter, Goldmerson from a few yards out, three yard touchdown, a 28 nothing lead. And this would be the icing on the cake as Mason on the corner out into the end zone from 42 yards. A massive win, 35-7 against Arkansas. Heading into our next matchup, Boise State Broncos coming into town. And it's a third and eight as the defense smothering Bolt. Nowhere to go. And on this curl route, Beeson into the end zone, 19 yards, 7 nothing lead. On a third and 15, they went with a trusty draw. Went nowhere. The defense continuing to stand up strong here for Oregon State in the very next possession. Bolden picks up a block into the end zone. Touchdown, Beavers. Silas Bolden with his first of the game. Last play before the half concludes. And the defense standing up as Taylor Green goes nowhere, 14-0 into the locker room. Third quarter, third and two. And here is Green. He finally get something to go here for the Boise State Broncos and takes it into the end zone from 16 yards out 14-7 game third quarter and Newell off the stretch picks up a block and he would take it all the way into the end zone a 21-7 score here in the third but the Broncos would bounce back with a two-yard fullback dive to Carl Kidd and then the very next possession would tie the game up with this scramble to the left. Taylor Green, we're tied at 21. We'd head into overtime with the same score and in the overtime, the first touchdown from Wright. Mark Wright makes it a 28-21 game, but the Broncos would tie it up. And in the second overtime, the defense stands up on third and two and they force the Broncos to a field goal. And Goldbertson able to connect on a third and 20 to John Turner from 20 
24 yards, and that would be capped off as Newell would walk it off for Oregon State, our second win now matching the season total from last year for Oregon State. With back-to-back -back wins, we now take on the Utes of Utah, number 13, and Newell over the middle, able to juke through the defenders, a 27-yard reception, which would be led to a touchdown. Silas Bolden yet again, 10 yards out, 7-0 lead, but here comes the defense, a big stop loss of three, fourth and 16, but the defense was not able to stop for much longer. Ricky Parks takes it from two yards out, ties this game up, heading into the second, a big pass over the middle to Bolden with set up on the fourth and three, but the defense from Utah able to stop a short and now, as we pick up with a minute remaining here in the half, 14-7 deficit, a dot over the middle, picked off by Phillips, unfortunately, stopping a great drive as the defense continued to just harass us time and time again with sacks, with picks. But fortunately, Zariah Beeson able to have a 15-yard reception, which would be capped off by a Ryan Mason 8-yard touchdown, making it a 14 all game. Fourth quarter tied up, third and four. The defense standing up strong forces the Utes to a field goal. And on the very next offensive possession, a ill-advised short thrown pass. It is picked by Renfro as the game begins to crumble here for Oregon State. A pass over the middle down by 10. Smith catches another pass over the middle connected by Mason as the offense is just rolling along here looking like we're going to lead into the end zone here with just a minute remaining as we connect yet again. There's Mason trying to get to the out of bounds. Second and 10 over the middle. Goberson hits Newell, makes it now a one possession game. All we need to do is recover the onside kick, which ends up being the worst I've ever seen in my coaching career. And unfortunately, we are not able to upset number 13, Utah. And now we head on to the road matchup against number 10, Arizona State. Picking up second quarter down 7 0, and now make it a 14 0 as Badger from eight yards out makes it a two possession game. Fourth and five, 323 remaining in the half, and there's a connection over to Mason, able to convert the fourth down conversion and be walked into the end zone from Goldmanson, make it a one possession game now. With 21 seconds remaining in the half, a pass over the middle able to connect to John Turner, which will be walked in by Demir Collins, 14 all heading into the locker room. Picking up with the 17-14 game, an interception here in the third quarter by Williams, just a dot too low first pick of the game. And now the second off a batted and somehow gathered in by Taylor, second pick of the half. But we get it right back in the end zone. Evans able to stop a drive as it was a big stop second turnover there by Arizona State. As now we come into the fourth quarter and a big play here for Arizona State is Robertson able to off the read option to take it from five yards out, a two possession game. 24-14, first and 10 and down on the vertical route, we hit Marcus Williams from 33 yards out, a one possession game. Under a minute remaining, a deep bomb, and it's laid out as Bolden, able to take it into the end zone 45 yards and gives us our first lead here against number 10 Arizona State. But unfortunately, too much time left on the scoreboard as a streak as he beats the secondary Elijah Badger, 31-28. And unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, after this pass just missed thrown, it is picked by Johnson. And we went from thinking we won this matchup against number 10 Arizona State to losing it at the last second, a big win for Arizona State. As we try to bounce back here against Colorado, and Colorado said something about it. Fitch, 7-3 lead. Goldberson now here on this one, picked off by Oliver. He would take it to the end zone, and now a 14-3 deficit. As we pick up before the half, make it 21-3. It was all Colorado here in this matchup here against us. Third quarter, same score, and he would take it from a few yards out. Fitch, another rushing touchdown, 28 to three, and that was all she wrote for this matchup as Colorado came in and upset us with a major victory, 37 to 17. After dropping our first three conference games, we are dead last in the Pac-12, coming into a road matchup against number eight, Arizona. And it looked like a touchdown in the drive, but unfortunately batted out of the hand. It is a turnover, a fumble on the goal line, and then capped off a touchdown, Anthony Simpson, 21 yards out. Five seconds remaining in the quarter. A beautiful pass over to Mason, converts the third down conversion, and then a couple plays later over the middle, Beeson into the end zone would tie this game up at seven, second quarter. Second and goal, and now John breaks a tackle, spins through into the end zone. Jalen John, 14-7 lead for number eight, Zona, and then Collins doing his best to keep a drive going here. Goes down, unfortunately, with an injury, so he would be out for the remainder of the game. 
Fourth and 10, minute 30 left in the half. Beeson able to convert and keep the drive going here for the Beavers, and that would be capped off with Mason. 10 yards out, 14 all heading in to the locker room. Fast forwarding fourth quarter, big field goal as it is missed by the Arizona kicker. And now we're going to head in with a great chance to take the lead, but unfortunately underthrown as Young would pick the ball off. They would then take that ball into the end zone. And on a last heave, a Hail Mary, it is not going to connect. We would drop a game, 28-21 here, a game we should have won here against Arizona. So coming into the final five weeks, we would need to win four of our last five games to make a bowl as Collins on the pitch, fourth and goal, end zone, touchdown on five and four Cal. Now with a fourth and one, the defense stepping up and able to force a turnover on downs leading here, heading into the locker room, 21-0. Third quarter, 21 to the score, and here is the defense relenting a touchdown, 21-9, now your score. Same score, fourth quarter, Goldbrunson trying to have the dagger as Beeson, 22 yards out, makes it a 28-9 game. And fourth and two, trying to get something going, but fortunately for us, it is a strip sack fumble. We would have a turnover on downs, and that would do it. We'd pick up the big win here on our home field as Collins had a heck of a game as now we look to take a win against number 21 Washington on the road. Second and three over the middle. It is a touchdown for Rome Odunes with a seven yard catch, seven nothing Washington. But we would answer right back on the pylon Beeson, 26 yards. What a throw, what a catch, tied up at seven. Under two minutes remaining in the half and a terrible breakdown defensively as Jalen McMillan takes it from 16 yards out and gives the Huskies the lead. And then an interception, we had a great drive there, but a terrible pass through the middle and before the half, they'd make it a multi-touchdown game, except it was an illegal touching, so that would lead to a field goal. Second half, 17-7, Bailey from eight yards out makes it now a three-point game. Third and seven, Goldmanson over the middle, hits Beeson. He would make it a first and goal. And the very next play, Newell off the bubble would make it a 24 to 21 game. Down by three, first and 10, Turner would make it a first and goal. After a great block and a play downfield was set up the very next play as Goldmanson able to scramble out. He hits his halfback, Newell, and it gives us our first lead of the game. And then the defense stepping up. But unfortunately, this face mask would set up this first and goal play, a pass out to the tight end, Quentin Moore, two yards, and now we are trailing with a minute 30 remaining. But Collins on a second and four would take us down and make it a first and goal with seconds remaining would cap it off a yard out 34 to 31 as we would come in on the road and upset number 21 Washington now it's time to come to Washington State in the snowy environment and on the first third and two Beeson breaks a tackle on the curl and he would take it to the end zone from 62 yards seven nothing beavers Second quarter, same score, first and goal, and Goldbrunson, not a scrambling quarterback, he's a pocket passer, but he takes it from two yards out, 14-0, and on a fourth and two, Washington State tries to catch us off guard with the punt fake, but it's a turnover on downs as we get the stop. 30 seconds remaining in the half, and Newell from two yards out takes it to the end zone, a 21-0 lead into the locker room. Same score, and now no more as Newell breaks the tackles on the stretch into the end zone. A huge day for Newell, another one there to cap off this game. He had three rushing touchdowns, a massive victory. Gives us our fifth win of the year. Now one win away from a bowl eligibility. As we would come on and take on our arch rival in the Civil War series, Oregon number three in the country, and unfortunately it was all Oregon from the first snap as Garbers here would get the first touchdown of the game. He would take it from 13 yards out, 7-0 Oregon. Same score, second quarter from a couple yards out. Jordan James makes it a two possession deficit here for us as we try to get on the end of the scoreboard at the end of the half, seven yards out, 21-7 at the half same score third quarter and james just continued to gash us up the middle make it a 28 7 game and on a fourth and four a dropped pass by Beeson would spell the end of this one as oregon comes in on the road and now the number one team in the nation a 56 to 14 loss so it came down to the finale stanford versus oregon state the winner becomes bowl eligible as robert taylor with the big catch and then the corner out bolden able to take this into the end zone, gives us the lead 7-0. Same score first and goal, and Filkins would make sure to make it a tie game from eight yards out, 7-6 to six, as we missed our PAT. And on a third and 10, a breakdown nearly intercepted, a play that we'd wish we can get back, but now trailing 
Fourth and six, we now take the lead as Zariah Beeson from 24 yards out gives us the lead. Second quarter, third and six, we stand into the pocket and a dart over the top. We would connect with Williams, a massive touchdown catch and reception, make it a 23-20 game as we pick up third quarter and Unger from seven yards out would give Stanford their lead here late in the game. Oregon State, fourth quarter trailing by 11, but no more as Marcus Williams does his part, nine yards out, one possession game and needing the PAT, no. We went for two, and we'd get it to Turner, make it a 34-31 game. Under two minutes remaining, and the defense stops Filkins in his track. We would take the timeout and need to drive down the length of the field as the defense for Stanford began to step up. And on this third and 20, just trying to get us in field goal range, we would underthrow as it was picked by the safety pain, and that would seal the deal on the season as we would drop our sixth game of the year, and now would be bowl ineligible as you see some of the conference champions as we finished seventh in the Pac-12 this season. One of the bright sides was Goldbrunson, our quarterback, our senior quarterback, led the league in passing as you get a look at the top four in the college football playoffs. As number four, Georgia, and number three, UCF, meet in the national championship, and it was all Knights, a 49-21 national championship victory for the Golden Knights. So after our first year as head coach, we went five and seven, which was a better year from the year prior as we had a huge senior class leaving us, as you see 14 players leaving, and we had the number 38 recruiting class led by five-star quarterback. But coming into season two, who would we start at quarterback? The senior Vidlak or the freshman redshirt Stallings? Both guys can run the ball fairly well, but Vidlak has the edge in the passing category. Who would lead this team in year two? 